Um, so yes, so I'm lead member for the environment, um, and in Brent's terms, that includes um, all of our sort of transportation, parking, um, as well as parks and open spaces, and also uh, litter recycling and waste collection services. Um, so I'm unique in being the only politician on the panel not standing for election, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite an interesting position to be in. Um, so when I was thinking about this, um, King's College have a really interesting app where you can kind of look at levels of air pollution in different places. And I thought it'd be fun to have a quick look at how Brent comes out of that last week. I kind of wish I hadn't done that, because what that said was at one point last week, Brent was the worst London borough. I had another look last night in the hope of being sort of reassured. We're now joint worse with Wandsworth than we were when I looked last night. So um, that didn't sort of make me feel any better about the situation, really. Um, as a local authority, um, clearly there are limits to what we can do because pollutants don't stay in one place. They cross borough boundaries. Um, infrastructure issues and tackling um, our chronic lack of infrastructure for things like electric charging points and so on does take a London-wide approach. Um, but there are things we can do, um, and that's why I wanted to sort of talk a little bit about my role. Um, firstly, on, on the sort of greening area, I'm really, um, I'd really like to support what Councillor Davidson said in terms of pocket parks, in sorry, terms of... Person, sorry. <laughs> in terms of... Um, continuing to plant trees and make sure that where we can, we do continue to make our borough as green as we possibly can to improve the quality of, of air. Um, Councillor Davidson also made a sort of wide, wider point on the environmental quality generally, and just to provide reassurance that we are, we are on average collecting fly tips within a day, which is our target, um, and also we're about to introduce um, enforcement officers for tackling litter offences by issuing on-the-spot fines to tackle envirocrime. So I look forward to Councillor Davidson's support with that pilot. Um, on the transportation side, um, we uh, are doing a number of things to try to encourage people to uh, take more sustainable modes of transport. Cycling has been mentioned already. Um, we do want Brent, I do want Brent to be a safe and inclusive place for people to cycle. So when we um, approved our cycle strategy uh, just as we came into 2016, the biggest barrier that people uh, highlighted to why they didn't cycle was because basically they were frightened because basically they were too afraid to get on a bike because of uh, other road users, congestion, um, just feeling unsafe. So it is a priority for us to create a borough in which people do feel okay to cycle, where um, we're actually introducing um, some bike hangers so that people who live in flats and on upper floors of flats don't have to um, find creative ways of storing their bicycles halfway up staircases and so on so that they can actually easily use their bikes. Um, and a whole host of other things including um, finding, finally finding a way for people to cross the North Circular um, by bicycle. Yes. Or all in the pipeline. Um, yeah, quite. It has taken a while. But, uh, but the Cycling Commissioner uh, is supportive of some of our plans so we, uh, we are hoping we can be able to get somewhere with that. Um, a walking strategy will be forthcoming later in the year as well, so we'll be going out to consultation on that probably early summer. Um, and again, safely able to being able to walk around the borough. A lot of car journeys that are done in the borough are done for very short distances. And we need to be able to sort of back up our encouragement of people to walk by being able to reassure them that it is safe to do so. On that point, obviously the state of the pavements is something that... Um, comes across my uh, my in, comes into my inbox very regularly, um, and we're just going through um, the process of uh, seeking additional funding to tackle some more pavement related um, defects. So we do actually split our investment at the moment 50-50 roads and pavements, but we have considerably more pavement in the borough than we have road, uh, and therefore pavements can sometimes sort of come off come off worse in that. So we are going to try and redress that balance to some extent. And then movement of freight is the other sort of um, ongoing area. So in some parts of the borough there is a 7.5 tonne restriction, although 
Um, clearly there are some challenges around enforcing that. Um, but there will hopefully be an opportunity to look at how and when we allow freight to move around the borough. And I know that during the Olympics some quite interesting things were done in terms of timing, in terms of you know, allowing a certain weight, vehicle weights to travel only at night, although clearly that's potentially a hazard for residents whose normally quiet night roads will then be um, clogged with lorries. But there is, might be an opportunity to just look at being a bit more creative about that. Um, the second area is just around reducing cars. And it's kind of no more complicated than that, to, you know, really, because one of the you know, major contributors to air pollution, particularly on our major roads and around our schools, is just the sheer volume of vehicles on the roads. Um, there's a few things that we can do about that. So in terms of improving public transport, you know, Navin's already mentioned kind of efforts to make sure Old Oak Common is uh, well served to make sure that um, the public transport we have continues to improve. And we are working with Navin um, and uh, the Assembly to make sure, and with TfL as well, to try and deliver some improvements on that. Electric vehicles, and um, it's a very timely meeting. So last night, Cabinet approved um, for us to enter into a contract with a company called Blue Point London, who provide electric vehicle charging points for 10 other authorities at the moment. Um, they will uh, upgrade the existing points we have, uh, which I'm ashamed to say are not in the best state. So we have probably, I think it's about 57 across the borough at the moment. The number that are usable is significantly smaller than that, and uh, that's not good enough. So um, we are, will be upgrading those, and um, Blue Point London will maintain points and also add additional points. So what we'll look to do in future is through consultation with residents, and with ward councillors identify places where there is demand for electric vehicle charging and increasingly residents are coming to me and saying you know where are the points and if there isn't one near me I'm not going to invest in an electric car which is absolutely understandable so we can get hopefully we can get supply and demand to sort of marry up a bit more successfully in the future um, and because I'm the only politician on the panel who isn't standing for election I'll talk about parking um, which, which is always pretty controversial, but um, just to flag that tomorrow we're going into public consultation on some issues around on-street parking and charging. Now when we talk about our commitment to improving air quality, reducing car usage, this is kind of what it means in reality. In reality what it means is making sure that uh, the cost of travelling by public transport, the cost of parking in the borough is not significantly cheaper than using public transport for journeys where that is possible. And also looking at, for example, introducing a charge for diesel vehicles when um, residents have them on resident permits, looking at the number of permits residents are allowed um, and um, the costs of parking as a visitor in the borough. Um, some of that is extremely controversial, but I would urge everybody, since, you know, since we have an opportunity to look at a wide range of issues to contribute to that consultation. And the final thing in terms of my role is, is kind of keeping the traffic that we do have moving. So uh, moving traffic clearly is preferable to stop, start, stop, start traffic along our major roads. So looking at um, mechanisms for tackling congestion. And also something that I'm very keen to explore and that which um, we're doing some early work on at the moment is, the, is consulting on a borough-wide 20 mile an hour limit. So what can people do? Well, um, we've already had mention of a great example um, of the Chamberlain Road residents who've led the campaign which really has raised the profile of emissions and pollutants from buses um, along Chamberlain Road. Um, and Navin has helpfully outlined sort of what that campaign has covered and also I think the disappointment in terms of the response from, from the mayor that that's received. So we, we keep working and supporting residents on that. Um, involvement in the consultations that the council puts out. Um, I know replying to online consultations isn't everyone's idea of fun, but it really does matter because that's how we, we do know what people think. So it's parking starting tomorrow. Walking will be um, coming out in the next few months. And perhaps for, most importantly for this particular forum, we're going to renew our air quality 
action plan. So we have a plan, um, it's a bit outdated, um, and uh, you know, clearly as a Labour administration, we are really keen to bring that back up the agenda um, to make sure that that's renewed and refreshed. So we'll be doing a wide-ranging public consultation over the next few months on that as well. And um, obviously any ideas that experts in the room have, great ideas from other authorities, and ways that you know we can improve the quality of air in the borough will be greatly, uh, greatly appreciated. So that's all I was going to say. Um, thank you very much.